Happy birthday, dear Sibby. Happy birthday to you. I was in midterm of the ninth grade in high school. I was offered a chance to attend a youth forum in New York City, sponsored by the New York Herald Tribune. I had by this time a reasonable command of English, and I could write a decent sentence. I was asked to, to speak to a different uh, world that I would be existing in and about, about the adjustments I would have to make and uh, how did I feel about this. This was my Answer. Usually when I talk to older people and younger people at my age, I'm astonished at the fact that they want a utopian world without care. <coughs> I, uh, where did I, uh, 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 as for me, I like the world that I'm living in. Just the way it is. It's all of it. I like the fact that there's always going to be something to solve problems, to correct. It makes your existence come alive. It brings to you a sense that living in this century is really something. Living on an Indian reservation Which you have already given. 
You will be our warrior chief. So you learn what you can and bear, bear the, the ridicule that you will get, no doubt. And I must say, I did get some ridicule. But anyway, uh, uh, and I, I went forward, I met people, good people, I met some bad people. I learned uh, some of the ways of the white men and some of the ways that uh, they did things, which was weird. <laughs> but I tried to understand it all. And I went to the libraries, studied, and ever, ever. Uh, or didn't do something, they always punished me by stuffing me in the library. And I was, that's wrong. <laughs> because I really read. <laughs> and uh, since I was in the Catholic school, I know somebody here is probably Catholic. Uh, they taught you catechism. You didn't read the Bible. They said you have to have the composition of a child to listen and, and grow with that. So we'll teach you. You don't read that Bible. But that, you see, I was trained by the time that I went to the white man's school, I was 13 years old and in the first grade. I had been trained by the elders. I was taken when I was two years old. My mother donated me when she was pregnant <laughs> to be a rememberer. <laughs> so ever eight years, they would take eight boys and they would train them so that they could pass on all the things that they'd done and they would become the, the holy man, the medicine man, whatever. And he would pass this on to the people and that's the way they did it for centuries and centuries. We had no written language. So I was one of the last that was taken to be trained. And I can remember most things. My wife would tell you that that's not true. <laughs> but but uh, uh, important things I can remember. And from that training, uh, I can go from one subject to another and still be in command of the knowledge of it. But uh, uh, anyway, when I finished that and I was always asking questions about the ocean, I, I always liked the ocean for some reason. So the uh, when I was going to leave uh, to go to the white man's school, uh, the, the elders said, if you like the flame on the white man's wick, go learn of these ways so you can bear his company. I learned these ways a lot of time. Yeah, I got my nose broke. 
<laughs> I've hit them smart son of a gun right in the fist with my nose. <laughs> but uh, uh, going into the the trades and learning. I, I learned uh, to work on tractors and one thing or another at the school. I already knew how to milk cows. They had me milking cows. And, and that's the only reason they let me out of that library. Uh, when it come time to milk the cows. See? Otherwise I was punished and stuck in the library for a few hours. And I like the... Anyway, uh, uh, this one time that I got uh, uh, into the library, I didn't know that then, but uh, I, I caught fish and I furnished the fish for the school. I had live boxes where I'd catch these fish and put them in there, and I put the catfish here, the saugers here, the, the different types of fish. I had four live boxes that the school let me build. They had chicken wire on them. In there, so I had been there early morning, right after church, and I went, checked my line, put the fish in the box, and it's getting toward 8.30, and that's when school started. You better be there, too. But anyway, I got across this, we had a swinging bridge across this gulch. I was walking across there, and it was getting towards spring, and bright sunny day. And I looked down, and there was some prairie chicken. They was brooming, see. So, I walked in the classroom and the nun says, You're late. I am. <laughs> I heard the two bells, that five minute bell and then the final bell. She said, Where were you? I was on a swinging bridge when I heard the last bell. I said, What was you doing there? I said, I was watching uh, prairie chickens brooming. What? They were brooming. What's that? I said, making love. <laughs> <laughs> I got sent to the library. <laughs> You know, uh, another thing, see, is she said, after a few weeks I was there, uh, she said, I know something about Sebby LeBeau. See, all of us couldn't speak English. And I didn't uh, uh, know what these songs were, but I, I used to. They wouldn't let me. Uh, go because I was, wouldn't eat, they wouldn't even let me associate with my with my folks or my siblings. But uh, once in a while they'd leave me at home and I'd hear these cowboys singing. See, down there and that worked for my dad. So I I'd go down there and I'd listen. See, so I I got to singing these songs. See, I didn't know what to do. And she said I. I heard you could sing in English. I thought to myself, I wonder who told her that. <laughs> but uh, uh, she said, I want you to come up here and sing one or two songs for me for the, for the class. So I got up there. They couldn't understand anyhow those other Indians, you know. They couldn't speak English either. <laughs> Now she said, okay, you go ahead and sing. I had a little drink about an hour ago, and it went right straight to my head. Bang! 
We're not going to have no drunkards around here. I didn't make the library that time. Anyway, uh, uh, what I'd like, what I'd like to say is that uh, I'd like to leave uh, a message with you all. This is, I used to leave this for the younger people, not to be timid and squeamish about their action. All life is complicated. All life experience is hard. And most of it is a little bit coarse and a little bit rough. But so you get your coat torn or you get your coat dirty. It's it's all right, it's an experience. And if you fall and get roughed up and tumbled and turned in the dirt a little bit, that's okay too. You get up and go on and try a little harder. And if they come again, learn something. Learn how to fight. So that when they come again, you can put it on them. Anyway, uh, I like this sense, this I like this country, this country. I like the century that we're living in. I told, you know, they was asking me, and I'm, I'm just a young fellow. I said, I like it because it is what it is, and it makes it so interesting, and so to let me know that I have to know more to make a life for myself with, the, with these people. But I don't, I said to, I don't like people, soft people. People with soft heads and soft action. I like people, straightforward, and that way they can know their human worth. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> but I would like to say, Pilamaye wo pilanaho. For all of you people who don't speak American, <laughs> I said I certainly appreciate and I'm honored to be able to speak these words to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Nancy Klemick, and I work at the Grand Island Veterans Home as the Recreation Manager. And I met Sibby when we invited him to come and do a program for our veterans. And I was just struck by the fact that he had such an interesting life, and he was willing to share his early years, as well as the fact that he was a World War II veteran himself. And he just really had an inner light that spoke to me. And we just connected, and I've been privileged to know him ever since. And I just want to say, happy 90th birthday. You're the greatest 90-year young man I know. Thank you. Do we have to look over there? <laughs> I'm Joanne Badura. I also work at the Veterans Home in Volunteer Services and Recreation. And I, too, had the pleasure of meeting Sibby through Joe Robertson, Nancy, when we had him over um, at the Veterans Home to speak, and then also had the pleasure to um, hear him speak at different community events. But I have a favor to ask you.
One of my added on duties at the Veterans Home is looking after the library. So I was wondering, with your permission, and maybe with Larry Molchek's um, assistance, if you would honor us in allowing us to have a nice photograph of you framed and hanging in our library. Would that be okay? Then you'll always be in our library. I think that would be really nice, and I have a spot already picked out. Oh, and happy birthday. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Jana Van Housen, I'm, and I am here with my husband, Mark Van Housen, and I met you the day that you came to my church house, and I did your uh, portrait. And over the course of that morning, we got to know one another, and everything went very, very well. And I've just, it was an honor to meet you, it was an honor to speak with you and especially an honor to take your photograph. And um, you hold a lot of wisdom, which um, I wish that we could all download. <laughs> and uh, I'm just happy to be here and um, celebrating your birthday. So happy birthday, Sibby. I'm honored. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave Sprague. Uh, we met uh, Sibby at, I believe, the the, um, the bookstore, perhaps the first time. Saddle the Saddle Club was the first time. Okay. In the bookstore. Then the bookstore. Okay. And I was just intrigued uh, with his knowledge and, and depth, uh, personality, really. And I uh, I had to ask where the name Sibby came from. And uh, he told me, I might have the uh, pronunciation wrong, it's Saibi Haye. Is that right? Yes, it is. He pronounced it right. He pronounced it right, right? Is that right? <laughs> 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 I'm not very loud. Saibi Haye. Is that correct? So that's the one Lakota word that I can uh, have committed to memory, and um, I think it's uh, only fitting that it comes from a, a great man. I'm privileged to be a part of your uh, friendship circle. Yes, we met Sibby. I believe it was your book club. Was uh, Sibby was going to be the guest speaker at Hastings Bookstore, and so Larry brought Sibby to the Saddle Club. Uh, we do have Sibi Haye on our kitchen cabinets, so Dave, we see it quite often every time I open that cabinet. Um, you're just such a compassionate and loving person, and God really blessed us by putting you close to us. Happy birthday, Sibi. Hi, my name is Deb Overmiller, and I met Sibi to my good friend Joe. Um, we came, became good friends. Uh, Sibby went with me to Central Community College, did a presentation there, and um, I wrote a paper on Sibby. And so we did some TV shows together. We watched TV, and we've been out to eat. And you know, I'm 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 just so privileged to have known him. Um, in the short amount of time that I've known him, he's taught me a lot. Uh, he probably doesn't even realize how much, but it's been a lot. Um, you mean you were watching TV when I was sitting there talking to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, Sibby. <laughs> I, I think that's why we were supposed to be watching that show, but I listened to what, what you said also. <laughs> Very wise. I was there. And, not. Yeah. <laughs> and, and as you can see, what a wonderful sense of humor. Just love him. And I, I expect we're going to have many, many more uh, meals out together and many more, more talks. I look forward to them. Yeah. Maybe another 40 years? Yes. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I love you, Sibby. Many, you. many more happy Very birthdays. Honored. I'm honored to know you. Thank you. Can I? 
Yes, uh, this is this is the first talk. Uh, we've been married 13 years Friday, which Sibby promptly forgot. It was then our anniversary. And uh, this, yeah, I won't let him forget it. Uh, but anyway, this is the first speech I've ever heard. I've seen him on video and YouTube, and uh, it's quite impressive. Gosh. Thank you. <laughs> it is a compliment. Anyway, I just wondered how many people knew that he took care of his wife for 12 years as she had Alzheimer's, his first wife, because to me that was one of the things that I thought was such an amazing trait that you would be able to endure that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jill Robertson, and I also work at the Grand Island Veterans Home. And that's where I met Sibby, but I feel like I've known Sibby all my life. We just connected, and I love that man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Bob Humrick, and I've known Sibby for a number of years now, and I feel that it's a great privilege to know this man and to understand his wisdom and compassion. It was a very pleasant, happy experience when we took him to the Indian school and he got to see his old stomping grounds. That was the one that was stuffing me in a library. <laughs> I think they still talk about that. <laughs> Sibby and I roomed together up there that night. And it was about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning and the lights came on. And I thought, what's wrong, Sibby? He says, oh, I can't sleep. And I <laughs> covered my head with my pillow and the next day I said, as we were going home, I said, Sibby, I'm going to give you a new Indian name. I'm going to call you Nighthawk. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I give you an Indian name. I'll call you Big Hat. And anyway, um, Wish you a very happy birthday, and may the Great Spirit always watch over you, old warrior. I'm honored. Thank you. I'm Linda Humrick, and I don't remember for sure when we met, Sibby, but I was thinking it was when you, Roger, brought you to the, our house. Was that the first time? Anyway, we had a really nice visit, and we really hit it off, and we just really thank a lot of you, Sibby, and it's been a real pleasure to know you, and we look forward to seeing you and visiting with you many more years to come. You, Happy 90th birthday, and we love you. I'm going to get myself into the picture right now so I'm not the last but not least of, of everyone. I too know Sibby through the Veterans Home and after meeting Sibby for the first time he was my first guinea pig when I did a, a, a Veterans History interview and as I said before I learned a lot from that interview and one of the things I learned is that I should just shut up and let people talk. And Sibby <laughs> has plenty to say, and um, you don't need my questions to be able to draw that out. As time went along, Sibby became a good friend of me and my family, and my extended family, many of the people here. Um, and, I, and I really feel good about having a part in helping you make those kind of connections here. I know that much of your life was in South Dakota and Wyoming and, and points west from here. At sea. At, and at sea, yeah. And so I, 
I don't know what I want to say. <laughs> oh, I, I did. I wanted to comment on the fact that, Sibby, you, you remind me of that, that movie, Forrest Gump. Did you ever see that movie? Forrest Gump was always everywhere at the most critical period in history and played some role in about everything that ever went on. And I've been around you long enough that I've heard many, many stories. And one of the stories that impressed me along the way, is, which you just kind of blurted out in an offhanded manner one day, we were talking about um, that ship that they found over in China that was supposed to be the spy ship, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and um, what was that called? It was the Pueblo, the Pueblo yeah. And, and Sibby says, oh, well, you can't tell me that wasn't a spy ship. I helped put the wiring in it. You know? <laughs> and, and he's always erupting with stories like that. And I hope to hear many more of those stories as the years go by. And I'll turn this over to Sam. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yep. I'll just come on over that. Yeah, wait a minute. Me, he tells, I have to wait. Well, if you don't mind, I think for us older folks, it's hard to hear. If you don't mind, I'm going to sit a little closer. Yeah. Can you hear me, Mina? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, it's a bit confounding to take this position here because I really am trying to mirror the, uh, the Sibby I know, and I see him more so through Lynn's eyes, my wife. My name is Sam Zaleski. Uh, a lot of the perspective that we reflect is when we see ourselves and the world around us through the stories that Sibby tells us. And those stories are engaging. That's the kind of world that I enjoy seeing and hearing about. Now, admittedly, I think you make it a bit more exciting sometimes than what I would have heard or read. And I hear you talking about being in this parochial school, Catholic parochial school library, uh, I also went to parochial school, <laughs> and I happen to know that a parochial school library is actually a closet with one light bulb at the top <laughs> and a fan of uh, shelves, and there's usually not a window. Now that is, and it's had two well, then you were luckier. <laughs> Uh, that story sounds better when you tell it, and I, I really like your version better. So at, at 90, uh, as we look at ourselves, I hope we can see the world that Sibby sees, or at least our better version of it as it evolves. But without a doubt, their stories, your life, has made it possible for us to see it better than we would have on our own. And thank you for that. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah.